Welcome again to everyone. So, ang so today's topic would be intro to stock investing. So, just uh, siguro a brief um, background about the any investment club. Kasi medyo nakapag usap na rin with uh, kami kami nila DJ before. Na ang one of the objective ng group na to is to be able to share knowledge about investing at the same time later on be able to um, be able to empower you to also invest no so hindi lang natin objective dito to learn about investing but be able to uh, give you the tools para maka-invest talaga kayo in actual in reality no? so uh, so hopefully after this you'd be able to get to know more about uh, the investment options that you have. So, hindi lang to one go na one time, one time, big time na stock investing lang. We'll probably have more discussions about other investment tools and ano yung mga and how to get into them. Okay. So, so for now, we'll focus on stock investing. So, first, siguro, tinatanong ko to kanina, wala pang sumasagot. So, hopefully ngayon, meron ng uh, Sumagot, what would you like to learn in this session? So if you can just, siguro, ano na lang, para mabilis rin tayo and we'll have more time for Q&A. Ilagay niyo na lang sa chat. I'll give you mga two minutes. Type niyo lang doon what, any questions you want answered uh, during this session. So yan, si DJ, next start. What are your signals to help you decide when to buy a stock? Uh, kaya ako lang rin tinatanong to kasi para to see ano yung mga in-expect nyo and then what are versus to yung mga na-prepare kong slides. Uh, so, sino pa? What company do you suggest we can buy even with this economic crisis? Okay. From Philip. Anything else? Any questions na bago kayo dumating dito, you were thinking na uh, hopefully masagot dito? Okay, is this for long-term stocks or for day-to-day -day stocks? Okay, sige. Okay, so signals to help you decide. Okay, I address ko na lang rin isa-isa if mat medyo matatakal or we'll just breeze through it. Signals to help you decide. Uh, siguro yung specific signals uh, would be on later sessions na lang kasi signals would depend on uh, analysis na of technicals. Eh. So this Dito, we'll just talk about the basics for everyone's, for majority of the people. Kasi most yata wala pa talaga experience with, with stock investing. Company, do you suggest we can buy even? Uh, walang specific company, pero I can show you opportunities later dun sa towards the end. Why is this crisis an opportunity as well for us? Clarify ko lang, is this for long-term stocks or for day-to-day -day stocks? Um... Ang stocks talaga is open daily except for holidays. So it can be both for day-to-day -day and for long-term depending on the strategy. So later discuss ko yung mga things to consider when you think about strategies. Can we do both investing for the long-term and trading at the same time? Or better to start long-term muna than trading? Okay, so we'll, we'll discuss that later. Meron pa? Meron pang habol? Going once, going twice. Okay, so if meron kayong questions, platforms, okay, platforms. So, siguro yung uh, gusto malaman ni Gian dito, where, where specifically do we yan, monitor or invest? Okay, sige. Okay, so if meron pa kayong questions, just put it in the chat group, uh, group chat para I can babalikan ko later and then we'll, I'll, I'll get into them. Uh, teka, hindi pala ako naka-slide show. Ano nga ito? 
copy from friends. Okay. So, as you all know, di ba, dinidiscuss natin lagi yung financial planning pyramid. And dito sa financial planning pyramid, ang lagi natin ini-emphasize as financial advisors of an insurance company is that we build first the foundation. So pretty much yung foundation, I would assume everyone's really familiar with it. Um, and meron ng expertise kayo on the tools needed to build that foundation. Uh, as far as growth, mga education funding, retirement planning, planning, personal savings, these are things na I think alam na alam na rin natin based on what we do on our daily basis no, as financial advisors. Ngayon, the next question is we, we want to dive dito sa investment club na to, we will dive into the high risk um, uh, high risk part or investment instruments that we can do to further increase yung uh, further get us nearer towards that dreams or goals natin. No? So, ito ang focus talaga ng investment club, the high risk uh, investments. Okay. So, when it comes to investments, reality is risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. So, ang risk talaga is not because volatile ang isang uh, market or mas mabilis ka ma mawalan ng pera. Uh, but it really comes from hindi mo alam yung ginagawa mo. So the more na wala kang alam sa ginagawa mo or gumagaya lang tayo sa ginagawa ng iba without doing our own work, uh, personal due diligence, then mas malaki yung risk that we are taking. Uh, may nagsabi nga sa akin na parang or narinig ko yata somewhere na na business is actually not a high risk investment kasi every decision we make in a business is calculated so ibig sabihin pag nagbe-business ka as financial advisors and we're into the business uh, many people believe or think na business is a high very high risk uh, investment pero in reality lahat ng decision making na ginagawa within a business whether we do this or that calculated yan. Alam, namin yung, alam natin yung risk that we are taking. And alam rin natin kung gano'ng kalaki yung risk if we take that, uh, make that decision. So, really, it's really more about knowing kung ano yung pinapasukan natin more than just the instrument itself being risky. So, always remember that. So, wag lang tayo yung gagaya-gaya in terms of asikat ah, kasi yung stock investing. So, we'll, we'll do stock investing na lang kasi sikat sila ngayon, di ba? So, mahirap yung ganun. So, why do you want to invest? So, briefly on the chat group, can you answer first kung ano yung reason nyo, why do you want to invest? We'll give you probably mga one to two minutes for this. Ano yung reason nyo kung bakit nyo gusto ma or naging interested kayo to invest? What time? Three three twenty. Wala. Wala kayong ano? Anyone? Why do you want to invest? Anong reason? To make money work for me, okay? Make money work for me. Listen up. Yung iba. More of long-term, higher potential returns. Okay? So, more to get higher returns. To grow my money and my income. It adds additional income sources. Okay? To grow money, adds additional income sources. I guess it's more of a regular income stream na pumapasok. More of passive income. Generating passive income. Anybody else? To earn dividend from big companies, part owner or stockholder. Okay, si Dennis, I bought Ali AC SMC to start. Next investing plan is SM Investments Corp. Because I know and believe in these companies, most stable sila, I think. Any investment advice for stocks to buy next based on stock prices naman to gain income from it. Anong MSI lang? Company ba yun? 
spread my income stream. Okay, so spread my income stream. Ah, okay. Multiple streams of income pala yun. Okay. <laughs> Kala ko company yun eh. <laughs> okay, so okay. Thank you for, for your inputs. No? So pretty much, halos karamihan naman ito yung ano, to summarize all those. Ang gusto lang talaga natin why we invest is to have capital appreciation. Meaning yun nga, yung, yung lumalaki yung uh, you, you gain um, higher returns for your capital or you create a passive income stream. Okay? So, yun talaga yung, yun mostly yung naging objective natin kung why we really want to invest. So, let's look up, look at investment opportunities. So, the, I listed down five, at pretty much ito yung mga common investment opportunities we have. Uh, starting your own business is one and Yung business is a broad um, broad spectrum of different businesses. No? So, marami pang very vague pa yung business. So, siguro later on, we can dive into those in later sessions. Getting into real estate uh, or property investing, investing in trading stocks, lending money, isa rin to sa mga uso, and sometimes to bonds, time deposit, cooperatives, or through your own personal connections. No, na nagpapautang ka ng uh, pera adds to your income stream. And then yung pooled funds, ito yung uh, I would assume most of us would be familiar na with uh, which are the mutual funds kung saan nilalagay yung uh, funds na yung yung accounts account values ng mga VULs natin and the UITF pretty much works the same way as the mutual funds pero uh, offered by banks lang. Okay? So ito yung mga investment opportunities natin. And pretty much all these investment opportunities can give you capital growth and passive income streams. So for business, you could gain capital growth through profit being saved. Okay? And then uh, passive income naman through dividends, which are sometimes guaranteed, sometimes not guaranteed, depending on the business or the depending on how profitable na the business is. Okay? So sa real estate, uh, Capital growth comes from property value, uh, value appreciation. And then passive income comes from rental income. Okay, so, yan yung ways mo to get passive income. If meron kang property and then you have it rented out. Um, yung capital growth pala for real estate, marirealize mo lang yun. If nag-appreciate yung property, value ng property, and then you sell it. Okay, that's the way to realize the growth of your capital. Uh, stock investing, stock value appreciation, which is yung pagtaas ng value ng, ng price ng stock na yun. And then passive income mo is likely through dividends rin. Okay, so uh, very, ito na yung, but these are not guaranteed as well. Not all companies give dividends and not all companies give regular dividends. Okay, sometimes may ibang companies na bibigay ng dividends pero hindi regularly. Uh, and then lending, uh, if you are into lending, capital growth mo comes from saving the interest na binabayaran sa'yo. Diba? Tinatabi mo na yung interest that's being, uh, na binibigay sa'yo. And then uh, passive income mo is through interest if medyo malaki rin yung pinapahiram mo. Okay, so an example would be, let's say meron kang uh, 500,000 for example, earning 10% a year. Uh, for the next 10 years, for example, ang capital growth mo is if yung nakukuha mong interest quarterly or yearly na uh, 50,000, tinatabi mo yun, then later on, after 10 years, you'll see na yung 500,000 mo uh, na doble na. Okay. And then pooled funds, uh, pooled funds naman, capital growth comes from value appreciation, then just like stocks, uh, and passive income. Ang passive income naman is through dividends, which is rarely given. So, buong time yata nag-invest ako sa mutual funds, parang once or twice pa lang ako nabigyan ng dividends. Pero meron. Pero meron. Okay. So, in the next slide, you'll see my own personal take on these investments and yung strategy ko in terms of capital growth and passive income. So, may disclaimer pa yan. 
Okay, this is just my personal view and opinion. And yan, any investment strategy may work for you, pero this, these things work for me. Okay, so for capital growth, ang, ang ano ko talaga is business, uh, stock investing, and pool funds. So I don't want to rely on uh, stock investing for passive income kasi um, you, you would need a big amount of money invested to realize dividends. And dividends are non-guaranteed then. So hindi mo rin sure kung uh, you'll get passive income talaga. So I use stock investing as, uh, as capital growth for me. And then same with pooled funds. Uh, business, pwede siyang both capital growth and passive income. Uh, pero at the start, usually capital growth lang yan. And then later on, habang tumatagal na yung business mo, it can be a source of passive income. Okay, so real estate investing via rentals. So ang real estate, mostly I use it for passive income stream. So I have uh, condo unit na pinaparent ko. I don't really, at this point, hindi ko pa siya iniisip in terms of uh, uh, selling the property. Although if I sell it, marirealize ko na yung capital growth kasi nagtatanong na rin ako in terms of how much yung current market value niya. But for now, uh, if I buy real estate, ang gusto ko, I use it for rentals. And then lending is more of for passive income. Ang lending namin mostly na sa ano, rural bank or cooperatives, it gives mga 8% ganyan a year. Tapos you get it on a quarterly basis. So yun yung first-hand experience ko of lending being a passive income uh, stream for me. Okay, so, nasa sa inyo to on how you want to strategize in terms of how to allocate your portfolio para you get a balance between your capital growth and passive income stream. Ayan, si Argel, reinvest lang lagi mga dividends niya. So, you know, yung, yun, isang magandang way yun, if you get dividends, you reinvest it para mag-multiply yung uh, interest that you are getting in terms of yung uh, sa stocks if you're earning through stocks ganyan so magandang ano yun, magandang input yun okay uh, okay so for today we'll talk about investing and trading stocks okay dyan lang tayo magpo-focus and hopefully we can plan the others later on okay, stock investing So, before understanding stock investing, uh, review lang natin the types of business ownership. One is single proprietor, two is partnership and corporation. Okay, so for single proprietor, pretty much pag meron kang business, let's say, uh, nagtayo ka ng isang laundry, laundry business, okay, ikaw lang yung may-ari, uh, all the profits, ikaw lang, sa'yo lang yon. all the liabilities or the expenses, ikaw lang yung... Uh, uh, responsible don or accountable don sa sa mga yon so single proprietorship usually isa lang ang, uh, isa lang talaga yung owner niyan okay a partnership naman two or more as long as two or more kayo uh, it's considered a partnership meaning um mer meaning um yung yung profits niyan and yung liabilities niyan are shared amongst the partners Okay, so so all uh, kayo yung accountable for all the liabilities. Ibig sabihin, pag umutang kayo, both accountable din kayo dun sa utang na yun. Okay. Uh, a corporation naman is usually, yan, sabi niya, no, merong one person corporation. Pero ang difference nito is yung uh, a corporation is treated as a different entity. Meaning, pag umutang yung corporation, it's not considered as utang of the owners, but the corporation itself. Tama, di ba, Dennis? Correct me if I'm wrong, ha? pero ganun yung setup ng corporation. It's a totally different entity with different shareholders. Uh, and these shareholders have uh, equities as ownership or shares as ownership to... to determine that they own part of the company and then they share in the profit as well pero they are totally different entity from the corporation so yung mga liabilities yan, ng corporation it's is sa corporation lang not really on the individual 
who is a shareholder. Okay? So, bakit ko na-explain to Kasi uh, stocks are usually, uh, stocks are uh, particular with corporations or, or equities are particular with corporations. Not really uh, sa partnership or single proprietorship. But yung physical, yung stocks mismo, uh, nagre-relate to sa corporation. Okay. So, what are stocks? So, stocks, a stock is a type of security that signifies ownership in an issuing, in the issuing corporation. So, it's parang a proof of ownership. If you buy a stock, that means you have a, you have a, you have a proof of ownership sa isang corporation. It also entitles a uh, stockholder to that proportion of the corporation's assets and earnings. Okay, so, being a stockholder, like I said kanina, uh, entitles you to the assets and the earnings ng companies if nag-profit yung company. Okay. Where can you buy stocks? Okay. So you can buy stocks in what we call a stock exchange or a stock market. Okay. So not all companies in the Philippines are listed in the stock market. Okay. Usually, uh, companies list in the stock market because they need capital, they want to expand their business. So, doon sila kumukuha ng pondo para i-fund yung uh, further fund, fund yung expansion nila or yung growth ng company. Okay? So, that's why they enlist in the stock market. Okay. And sa Philippines, we have the Philippine Stock Exchange which is located in BGC. Um, and it consists of 271 companies. Okay, so 271 companies lang are listed in the stock exchange. So um, only shares of these companies lang ang pwede nyong bilhin in the market. Okay? And the stock exchange is open between 9.30 to 3.30. Pero currently hanggang 1 o'clock lang due to the quarantine or the lockdown. Okay. Now, at, ano naman yung Philippine Stock Exchange Index? The index consists of the top 30 uh, companies listed in the stock exchange. Usually, I think these are the top in terms of market capitalization as far as I know. Eh. Pero there are different indices rin. When pwedeng real estate index or uh, mining index. Depending, pero wala pa tayong mga ganun, pero in other stock uh, exchanges meron na. But for us, ito rin ang indicator of the general state of business, Philippine business. Meaning, uh, usually dito nakikita if businesses are doing well kasi nga these are the top companies in the country. So dito na gauge kung how businesses are doing. Kaya madalas na nakikita. Yung stock, yung PSEI, Yun yung nakikita nyong number usually. PSEI is currently at 5,600. Ganyan. Uh, this is also the top 30 companies where our PAMI Equity Index Fund are invested. Okay. So, ang difference niya from the... Ang difference ng Equity Index Fund natin is that the Equity Index Fund natin is invested in these 30 companies. But yung Strategic Growth Fund natin uh, can go beyond these 30 companies. Ibig sabihin, pwede sila mag-invest in other companies aside from these 30. Again, if you have questions, I'll list, i-type nyo lang doon and I'll try to answer them. Okay, so what are the, ito muna, before thinking about going into stock investing, what are the important factors to consider? One is that you should have a plan. So if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Most of those who are having problems with the inv with investing in stock market is that wala silang plan. Okay, hindi nila alam kung why they bought this company. Ang um, usually plan lang nila is kung ano yung plan ng kaibigan nilang nagkwento sa kanila na okay sa stock market, okay mag-invest sa stock market. Pero wala talaga, hindi talaga nila naintindihan kung ano yung nangyayari doon. So, one major factor is that you should have a plan. Okay. 
if you are changing strategy midway to make yourself feel better, you might be doing it wrong. Okay, so I mentioned this is because minsan you buy a stock na iniisip mo, you'll buy it for the short term. Pero pag naipit ka, mag-change ka ng strategy na you hold ko na lang kasi long term naman ako. Okay, so usually pag ganun yung mindset, uh, you're not moving in the right direction, meaning there's something wrong with your strategy. If you go short term, you go short term. Miss strategy ka for short term, miss strategy ka for long term. Hindi ka mag move, mag change strategy midway dahil lang nalulugi ka na. Okay? So, very important yung strategy. And then do not be greedy. Okay? Sometimes they marami na ipit because they're too greedy. Meaning, maganda na yung profit, hindi nila binenta agad. They try to wait. Baka kasi tumaas pa. Kasi nga, hindi nila naitindihan. Naghintay sila, baka tumaas pa. And then in the end, bumaba ulit to the point na nalugi na sila. And then manghihinayang sila na, ay sayang, dapat binenta ko na. Okay, so, always have a strategy. Ito, nakuha ko to from Arjel. There's always an opportunity. So, do not, fear of, do not have the fear of missing out. Okay, laging may opportunity. Laging may opportunity to buy. It's just understanding one your strategy, understanding how the market is doing, and then uh, finding the right opportunities when to buy and when to make a profit and when to sell. Okay, so, laging merong opportunity. So, kayo mang hinayang. Um, markets don't care how you feel. So, keep your emotions in check. Okay? So, ito hindi ito maiwasan, especially if medyo bago. Siyempre, pera yung pinag-uusapan. Eh. So, uh, sometimes yung, yung emotions natin get in the way. Um, ibig sabihin ko, sometimes you feel like uh, na parang excited ka masyado to buy, kaya bibili na ako. Yung pala, nakabili ako at the top of the, you know, Sobrang taas na pala nung nakabili ako. So, the next few days, biglang bumagsak. And then, manghihinayang ako. So, gagawin ko, matatakot ako. Then, let my fear get the better of me. Ibebenta ko na. So, at in the end, nalugi ako. So, again, this is where strategy comes in. So, keep your emotions in check. Stick, stick ka lang to the strategy. So, how to earn investing in stocks? So, ito yung different strategies that you can take. Short term, if you're doing short term trading, uh, if you want to earn short term, you trade regularly. Okay? Um, don't think about value investing. Later on, they discuss ko trading and value investing. Don't think about value investing if yung time horizon mo or the strategy mo is for the short term. Kasi you'll be disappointed. Okay? Um, and then, dividends, you can still earn dividends through short term. Uh, kahit na short term lang. Okay. Um, and then medium term, you trade regularly, you can do a little bit of value investing, and then you can also earn through dividends. Actually, in all short term, medium term, long term, may, may dividends yan, eh, depending on the company that you are buying. So, ang difference lang talaga dito is when you trade and when do you value invest, you know, do value investing. Okay, so long term, you don't trade really long term. Kasi by the time na you don't do trading in the long term, like five years, and you do it short term gains, uh, you realize gains ka agad in the short term. Hindi ka, pag naghintay ka five years before you realize your gain, then you're value investing already. Okay? So yun yung kailangan yung isipin. Short term ka, you trade regularly. Yun yung objective mo is to earn short term. Yun yung tanong ni Dennis kanina. Meron siya binili uh, ng mga stocks for the long term. Ngayon, gusto niya matutunan how to trade stocks para ma-realize niyo yung return uh, ng, in the short term. So, if short term ka, you trade regularly. If medium term ang time horizon mo, you trade regularly at the same time, you value invest siguro mga 3-5 years. Pero depende pa rin yan. Ha? Later, I'll discuss yung mga factors. And then, if long term ka, purely value investing ka. So let's talk about trading regularly. When I see trading regularly, it involves charts. Okay, I won't go into details 
ano yung meron dito sa charts about support resistance kasi I think it's a much deeper uh, concept na kailangan talagang mas tutukan. So, I think I would let uh, like sina Argel, sina Roel, or sina George to discuss trading as far as strategies, indicators, and all. But ang concept ng trading regularly is you analyze the charts, you look for trends to determine how the stock price is going to move okay, in the short term. Okay, is it going? Nakikita ba sa charts na pataas na siya or pababa siya, etc. Et so this is how a chart looks like. Uh, Meron mga terms dyan like support, resistance, and all. Uh, hindi ko muna i-discuss dito. Baka ma-overload ka ng information. Okay? So this is how a chart looks like. Don't be overwhelmed. Um, uh, masasanay ka rin if you regularly look at charts. Pero what I usually do is that I look at the charts to see rin uh, where the price is na and where it was. Kasi ako talaga more of value investing na ako. I look for opportunities to invest in the long, medium to long term. So trading, hindi rin ako magaling dyan. So I'll let the others speak more about it. Okay. But what are the things that you can you should consider when you trade regularly? Okay. Trading regu trading is not as easy as it's as it sounds. Okay. So marami nang sabi na madali na makumita sa stock market eh you buy uh, at a low point and you set buy low, sell high, pero what's a low, what's a high? Hindi din natin alam. So you have to really study, study, study. And uh, it takes lot of experiences, lots of trials, lots of uh uh, loss before you'll be able to get used to uh, trading. Okay? So observe trends and understand charts or indicators. So sa trading, ang tinitingnan talaga dyan, trends. Okay? Ano yung trend ngayon? Is it going trending down? Is it trending up? Ano yung mga indicators to say na it's the right time to buy? Uh, ano yung mga signals ko to say na, okay, pwede na ako bumili kasi pataas na to or ano yung mga signals ko na hindi pa pwede kasi kahit na mukhang pataas na yung chart, uh, hindi pa yan yung time, hindi niya masusustain yan or uh, things like those. No? So, you have to study these things before you'd be able to trade effectively. Okay? So, do not try to catch a falling knife. Learn to cut losses. Okay? So, meron mga kakilala na they don't understand. First off, they don't understand. Hindi nila na intindihan yung strategy that they are doing. So, nakikigaya lang sila. They think that it's a, it's a good investment kasi in the past few days, tumaas siya, malaki yung tinaas niya. So, and then bumili sila, yung pala pababa na siya. So, they caught a falling knife na naipit na sila. So, may iba, uh, may kausap lang ako kanina, kabarkada ko na parang he's down 50%, 40% in some of his uh, stocks. So, medyo mahirap yan. Sinasabi ko rin sa kanya na baka at some point you have to cut loss na kasi hindi mo sure kung babalik pa. And these are not yung mga big blue chip stocks. Ha. So, these are mga mid caps so or mga smaller companies. So, mahirap for them to 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 re recover ka agad. So, always learn to cut losses. At certain point, ilang percent, dapat out na ako dyan. Hindi na ako, hindi ko nahihintay yung bumaba pa lalo. Okay? Uh, charts do not care about the news. It's all about the price. So whatever you hear sa news doesn't really impact much on the stock prices when it comes to trading. Kasi there will be times na maganda nga yung news pero you would see that the stock is going down. Merong times na hindi nga maganda yung news pero you'll see the stocks moving up. So wala talaga siyang kinalaman. It's all about trends and indicators. Price lang ang tinitingnan dito. Okay, again, if you're changing strategy midway, yung tipong feeling mo nagtitrade ka and then later on bigla mo naipit ka and then, then you might be doing it wrong. Hindi tama yung pagtitrade mo. So usually pag nagtitrade ka, there are... Uh, there are limitations eh. Kung hanggang saan, pag nag-earn ako, magsasell na ako ng content. Okay, so, yun yung things that you have to consider when you trade regularly. Uh, 
Okay, so ano naman when you val do value investing? Okay, these are analyzing companies' business performances to assess future potential growth. Meaning, ang isang company ba kumikita? How much yung kinita niya? Gaano kalaki yung utang niya? Is it too much? Masyado bang malaki yung utang niya? Uh, masyadong maliit yung profit niya for the utang, etc. etc. So these are seen through the annual reports uh, to see kung ano yung nangyari before and where the company is heading. Okay? So when you value invest, usually medium term to long term talaga siya. So what do you consider when you do value investing? First, you understand the business. Okay, so um, if marami sa marami ring companies sa sa stock market, especially sa mga blue chips or holdings company, meaning yung yung business na nakalis kung yari SM 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 investments, hindi lang siya uh, kumikita through the malls, uh, but maraming businesses siyang hinahawakan. Uh, so diversified yung businesses niya within that. So understanding the business would mean you understand kung ano yung mga businesses doon and then are these types of businesses sustainable and are these types, are these businesses earning? Um, so kailangan mo rin maintindihan if ano yung situation na within that business. Okay. And most of those are in the annual reports naman. Okay. And then you have to have patience. Okay. So again, uh, patience is the key here kasi nga, due to the volatility, minsan you buy now, long term ka pala, bumili ka ngayon, long term, long term ang strategy mo, ang iniisip mong strategy. Bumili ka ngayon, bumaba, 5%, 4%, medyo kinabahan ka na. Eh, yung long term na yan, we're talking about months or years. Eh, ikaw one day pa lang medyo kinabahan ka na eh. So, baka hindi yun yung strategy na you have in mind or baka uh, kailangan mong dagdagan yung patience mo kasi pag sinabi long term, long term talaga tayo. Okay. We all value things differently. Understand why you are buying a certain stock. So, again, when you buy a stock, you have to understand bakit ka bumibili that stock. Okay. Everyone would have their preference. So, like, merong mga tao would prefer uh, Ayala Corp over the SM. Merong mga tao would prefer PLDT over Globe. Merong mga tao would prefer, prefer to have both. So we have to understand, bago ka bumili, bakit ko binibili to? Why uh, Ayala Corp? Why Ayala Land? Why ganito, ganyan? Okay. So uh, is it, I've seen businesses, you know, real estate, nag-boom, ganyan, ganyan. Maraming magagandang property si Ayala Land. That's why nag uh, ano ako nag-invest ako diyan nakita ko si Mega World maraming ganito ganyan so kaya ako nag-invest plus the the financial statements uh, justify kung bakit uh, maganda yung business nila okay. so one strategy as well in value investing is you buy in tranches to lower your risk okay. so if you let's say you have let's say 100,000 kung gusto mo ma-lower yung risk mo you can buy uh, in tranches. Kasi hindi mo alam ano yung low point eh. So let's say you feel that uh, 2 peso per share is enough na, uh, is magandang value na for a specific company, you buy at 2, two pesos per share in terms of mga 20,000, ganyan. And pag bumaba, you buy more. Diba? Pag bumaba pa, you buy a little bit more. So it lowers your uh, risk naman. So that's how you manage risk when it comes to value investing. And then you cost, yun yung tinatawag natin cost averaging. Diba? So habang bunga ba, bumibili ka at a lower price, uh, ko cost average ka na nun. Okay. Also, there's no such thing as holding forever. At certain point, you want to realize your earnings. Okay. Um, at a certain point, you want to sell para naman makuha mo na yung earnings. Kasi if there are things na, you know, uh, before a few Years ago, na people thought that PLDT is one of the most uh, the stronger companies when it comes to value investing. Because matatagyan PLDT and for the longest time they've been the number one in terms of market capitalization. Uh, sila yung lagging all companies but have 
a big chunk of their portfolio sa PLDT. And then, three, four years ago, biglang bumagsak si PLDT in terms of stock price. So, there's no such thing as holding forever. Ngayon, ipit ka na if you, you are still holding to a PLDT stock at this point. Kasi, most likely, you bought it at 2,000, 3,000. Uh, price ngayon is 1,000 plus na lang. So, at certain point, you have to sell. Okay. So, I was lucky na nung binili ko si PLDT before, uh, one of my first investments, kasi nga PLDT halos sure, eh. so I bought it at 2,200, pumakit sa 3,300 something before it free fall to where it is now. Pero, uh, I sold it at mga 2,600. Eh. Kumita pa rin, pero ano na, um, hindi na ganun kalaki yung kita. So, you really can't hold hold these companies forever. You have to, at certain point, you want to realize or gusto mo na makuha yung returns. So, how do you buy stocks? Okay. First of you have to remember, you, you can't buy a stock pag walang nagbebenta. So, there's always a buyer and a seller involved. And then, a middleman, which is what we call a broker. Okay. So, let's say for a stock, um, let's say for yung sa chart kanina. Okay. So let's say for, let's take this as an example, SM Investments for example. Let's say you want to buy SM Investments at 800 pesos. 800 pesos which is this point. Kung walang taong gusto magbenta at 800 pesos, hindi mo makukuha yung stock na yan. Okay? Hindi mo makukuha yan. So, um, so mapapaisip ka na nun. Hindi, hindi, na, hindi ko na ito makukuha. Uh, at a certain point, you might want to buy at 850. This point, if walang taong gusto magbenta at 850, then hindi mo pa rin siya mabibili. So, you have to be uh, reasonable and logical when it comes to uh, trying to buy stocks. But let's say you decide ka na you want to buy it at 950. Dito. Dito sa part na to, 950. Then you can choose to say, bili ako 950 and then let's say si, ako gusto ko bumili at 950. And then si Argel, for example, gusto niya na yung ibenta at 950 kasi nabili niya yung stock niya at 875. Eh. So medyo maganda na yung earnings niya. So then, that's the only time na push through yung pagbili ko ng stocks. Okay. And the one, the person that arranges that transaction would be a broker. Okay. And then there are different brokers uh, uh, not, that offers online services like COL Financial, sa BPI, meron rin BPI Securities. Yata yun. Hindi ko na maalala yung sa BPI. Uh, I think Metro Bank meron ding uh, platform. Kung yung tinatanong ni Gian kanina, ano yung platforms? involve uh, anong pwedeng gamitin to buy stocks. So, COL is one of the more famous ones kasi nga they're the pioneer in online trading. So, and then BPI meron, mga banks, some of the banks meron, Metro Bank meron. And then there are uh, ano to, yung brokers talaga na hindi related to any banks na that offers uh, online trading platforms din. Um, so, you can just search online brokers. Uh, marami, kang, marami kang may kita rin dyan. So, pero I think for starters, okay na rin si COL for starters. Eh. Uh, actually, hindi ko pa nakikita yung ibang trading platforms. Uh, but si, si, tawag dito, si COL, medyo magulo lang sa start yung user interface niya kasi old school. Eh. Hindi siya user-friendly talaga eh. But uh, you'll get used to it. Okay? You'll get used to it. And then, uh, for charting, you can use Instagrams for charting. Yung ginagamit ko. And I think si Argel yun yun yung ginagamit niya. To look at the charts and all. Okay? Question so far. May questions ba? Wala pa? Okay. So, Where is the opportunity? Okay, so we're, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about opportunities. Um, if you look at this chart, 
Okay, magkano po start yung amount open? Okay, sige, later answer ko. If you look at this chart, this is where, this is the current, uh, this is where Ayala Corporation is currently. Okay, if we look at this chart, it came from this point. Okay, sabihin na natin this point. Last September, uh, mga August siguro yan. Okay, August of 2019, nandito siya sa point na to. Okay. Now, if you see, over the past few months, sobrang laki na ng binaba niya. Okay, sobrang laki na. And a big part of that drop, itong steep drop na to, came from, was due to the panic that was caused by the lockdown and the COVID crisis. So a lot of the panic came here. So from here, at the low point na mga 400, okay, medyo naka-recover na ng konti to 498. So the opportunity is here because uh, prior to this, prior to the downtrend or the steep decline, okay, steep decline ng, ng stock prices during the COVID crisis, uh, medyo matas siya than where it is currently. So just imagine if you buy a stock na, let's say nasa 450 ka bumili. You buy Ayala Corporation at 450. And we all know and we all expect that COVID crisis will end at some point. We don't know if it's a month, two months, three months, four months, four, five months. So it will end. Okay? Even if you're trading for the short term, if you bought at 450, kumita ka na rin ng a little over 10% if you sold it at 498, for example. Okay? So more or less, a little below for 10%. So even if you're trading on the short term, medyo kumita ka na. Okay. If you wait, if you do value investing later on, and the situation, yung current crisis, uh, nabawasan, nawala na, then it, it has the potential to go back up to around mga 700, 750, 800. Actually, ako nga, kahit nga 800, masaya na ako if I bought at 450. I mean, that's... 40%, 50% na. So, so, yun yung where the opportunity is. Even if you're doing short-term trading, if you, even if you're doing long-term value investing, merong opportunity na, na uh, merong opportunity ngayon that you can take advantage of if you have additional funds and you will be able to realize them I, I don't want to promise na in one year or in a few months, kita ka na kagal. But I think give or take, mga, if you're value investing, give or take mga two to three years at most. Siguro. At most five years. So yung mga three years to five years, matagal na yung five years siguro. I think within the next three years, if medyo nakahanap na ng vaccine, babalik yan. Hopefully to this level, mga 900, 950 level. So, the opportunity is there. Okay? Ang tanong lang, if you have that uh, fund or you, you'll be able to grasp that opportunity. Okay? So, don't sa value investing. If you're trading, then you do your normal trades. You can read charts. You'll do charting and all. Pero for beginners, I think ang pinaka-basic is you think about value investing here and then wait for it in the next couple of years. I think maganda yung chance mo to earn a lot. Okay. okay, so magkano questions? questions? Kung may questions kayo, just put it there. Huh? Actually, this ends the basic. Okay, so we can talk more about, uh, kasi I don't want to overload you with information. Ang importante, you try to digest kung ano na-discuss dito. What are stocks? Ano ba yung kailangan ko i-consider? Open an account. Yun muna eh. Do the open an account and then if you have questions on the platform and what am I seeing here? Um, then we can also discuss it sa group chat dun sa investment club. Gano po starting amount? Oh, si Jerome naka-open daw siya 1K. To be honest, okay, to open the account 1K pwede. But if you have more, better you invest more. Kasi 1K mo can get you a stock scoreboard lot lang yun. Uh, Tao sa likod ko, wala. <laughs> Loko mo ako ah. 
okay, so, yun, yung 1K mo, wala ka masyado mabibili. Not sure kung may makuha ka. Baka meron. So, 1K. Pero just one stock. Baka hindi ka matuwa or mabitin ka. Baga. Maliban sa pandemic, ano pa yung mga normally reasons bakit bumababa yung stocks ng mga company? Uh, ang pag-move ng stocks talaga is based on volume. Maraming ba gusto bumili, supply demand, maraming ba gusto bumili, maraming ba gustong um, um, mas maraming bang gusto bumili kaysa mas maraming gusto magbenta. If mas maraming gusto magbenta, then most probably a stock will drop. If mas maraming gusto bumili, then most likely uh, stock would go up. Yun talaga yung pinaka-basic. Um, but yung current situation, yung steep drop talaga is more of because of, itong steep drop na to is more of, uh, ano talaga yan, um, tawag dito, due to the COVID. Pero this uh, drop since late last year, I think it's a downtrend. Eh. If you read the charts, medyo downtrend talaga siya. Hindi siya, hindi yung masustain yung pag break from whatever the support and the uh, the resistance is so which is a technical technical analysis na natin may ma, malalaman yun uh, okay ba mga IPO um, ako ang theory ang personal strategy ko for IPO is once I buy an IPO at an IPO price, okay, for those who don't know, an IPO is an initial public offering. Meaning, before isang company gets, let's say, yung laundry shop ko kanina na sinimulan ko, then inincorporate ko na yung laundry shop ko. And then I need more investors or I need more funding to expand it nationwide. So, gusto ko kumuha ng funds sa stock market. Uh, get investors from the stock market. So, yung laundry shop ko. So, ang gagawin ko is I will uh, try to list it in the stock market. And before I list it, there is an initial price wherein people can buy already. Okay. So, let's say ang initial price ko is at 1 peso per share. Okay. So, people would already buy. Hindi mo pa siya makikita sa sa COL mo, sa stock exchange, pero you can buy na. Okay, yun yung initial public offering. And then, let's say maraming tao nag-buy on a certain date that is also planned and announced na let's say on uh, Gen June 1, mag ipo ako. Ibig sabihin, dun na yung time na magiging available to the market yung stock ko. Okay. So, yun yung IPO. Okay. So, before ka makapasok sa 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 exchange you will do an IPO initial public offering ang tawag okay so okay ba mga IPO actually depende yan sa company pero ang strat strategy ko lagi sa IPO is that i buy IPO price pag umakyat ng konti kahit mga 3 4 5% out na ako agad kasi uh, yun lang yung strategy ko personal strategy ko um, kasi may mga Kasi lang hindi ko kaya i-wait or ayoko maipit. Kasi baka possible ang IPO is overhyped when it comes to uh, bago siya mag bago siya mag pa, mag go public. Kasi in, yung may-ari ng companies would want people to buy before pa siya mag go public. Siyempre, they want to do good. So baka na overhype lang. So usually what I do is if maganda yung company, I buy an IPO, immediately I sell agad and then I'll buy later on pag, pag medyo nag-settle na yung price niya. Kasi hindi mo talaga malalaman or mag-gauge ano yung real value of a company of that stock uh, until pumasok siya sa market. If people want to buy it or if people would rather not buy it. Okay. So yun. In terms of IPO, ganun lang yung strategy ko. So hindi ko masabi kung okay or hindi. Pero uh, you should have a strategy when buying an IPO. Mali yung pindot nung nagbenta sa case ni... Ayun. Yun din, may maling na pindot. Actually, nangyari nga yan. Recently lang yan, eh. early this year yata yan. 
Okay, for starters, what is advisable to focus on one company first or buy from multiple companies? Uh, okay, so practical. Uh, if you want to be practical, depend is a fund. It depends is a fund that you have. Uh, if you have 10,000, uh, 20,000, 30,000, you could probably buy two to three companies lang. Uh, if you have 10,000, you can buy probably two. If you have 5,000, parang bitin yung, bitin if you buy two eh. You probably want just one and then habang lumalaki yung capital mo or habang nagkakaroon ka na extra funds, you buy more. So ako, I just put, uh, go on the side of practicality. If you have more funds, then you have the opportunity to buy more companies. If you have lesser funds, then uh, you can just get one or two companies. So, ganun lang. Hindi siya really more of kung anong mas okay. Both okay if you know their strategy. Balikan ko yung other questions kanina. Um, signals to help you decide again. Like I mentioned sa technicals na siguro yung pag-uusapan. Uh, what company do you suggest we can buy? Actually, this is a big signal already for value investing. Yung price niya ngayon versus yung price niya when everything was normal. Uh, isa sa mga signals na, ako, for me personally, yan yung naging signal ko. Hindi naman talaga ako super active when it comes to stocks eh. Ngayon lang ako naging active kasi nga may opportunity. What company do we suggest uh, do you suggest we can buy even with this economic crisis? Actually, marami na ngayon at this Maraming charts ngayon na ganito yung itsura. So, if you're value investing, there are a lot already na pwede. Uh, pero I, get, I think uh, ang safe, if you want to be a little bit safer, you go with the blue chips muna. Especially if you're beginners. Uh, kasi yung most likely the blue chips will go up first than the, yung mga lesser known na mga companies. Uh, Long-term stocks for or for day-to-day? -day? Again, yung question ni Gian, you can do long-term. Okay, this signal for me is a good signal na for long-term. Okay, this, basing it from this chart. Um, medyo okay na yan for long-term. Things that I will be expecting when I value invest, let's say for Ayala Corporation, is that you know most likely yung profits nila in this year is mababa or wala. So, you have to factor in those things when you do value investing. So, you don't really, kubaga, you don't really have to look at the reports to know it. Common sense lang would tell you na most likely, sarado lahat eh, so most likely walang kita yan. Very minimal at the best, at best. So, this one, you can do long term, you can do short term trade, pag kumita ka na ng mga 10%, 15, 20. May iba kumita na ng mga 50 eh. 40-50%. Uh, can we do both? Yes, you can do both. Um, long term. and Or better to start long term muna than trading. Um, kung, kung you, I, I would suggest you allocate a certain amount of your money for trading and a certain amount for long term. So let's say you have 20,000, i-trade mo yung 10 as your, you know, as you learn the, the, the trading and then yung 10 siguro you can do long term. Kung gusto mo to have a little bit of both. The best of both worlds, kumbaga. To make money work for me. More long term, higher pa tayo. Uh, ano pa? Pag... Pag long term, kahit pataas ang value, buy more. Pero kapag pababa na sell na, tama ba? Uh, wait. I-analyze ko yung question. Pag long term, pataas ang value, buy more. Okay. If long term ka, meaning you buy a certain company and you feel na in the next 3, 4, 5 years or even longer, or siguro mga up to mga 5, 6, 7, mga 10 years, you feel that a company is going to succeed, then if you're investing long-term, then you invest in that company. Now, what 
you should do when you do long term is you do your due diligence in the sense na if may news about uh, earnings ng company, uh, kasi ina-announce naman yan eh, kumita ba si company this quarter, uh, anong ginawa ni company this year, you can review those reports on a year-to-year -year basis para to assess if uh, I should sell now or I should still buy more. Diba? So, pwedeng ganun yung strategy mo. Uh, if you go long term, depende at what point siya papaba na. Okay? So, let's say, bumili ka ngayon and you think long term, kumikita naman yung company, yung price lang niya medyo bumababa uh, because of short term volatility lang. Kasi volatile naman talaga yung market sa pababa, akit, pababa, akit. So, if yun yung reason mo, if you're selling, dahil bumili ako ngayon and then next month, bumaba siya, then that might not be a long-term strategy. So, you have to assess rin um, kung bakit siya bumaba ba. Okay. Dahil ba yung earnings niya hindi maganda or is it just part of the volatility lang of the markets? Yung ticker shows you kung sino yung mga bumibili at what price and gano karami. Yung sa taas, na yung may lumalabas, yung ticker na sinasabi mo is yung mabilis na nagro-roll. Eh. Pinapakita doon kung gano'n ka, sino yung bumibili, anong stock, and at what value, and at what volume. Uh, important yun for uh, technicals, yung mga, date, yung mga traders, kasi they need to know the volume. Kasi nga, like I said kanina, uh, the basic concept on why a stock goes up and down is because of the kung marami bang gusto bumili or marami gusto magbenta. So, yung volume determines if pataas or pababa yung price ng stock. Uh, AC, I think because of their mall rentals, maraming zero because of lockdown. Question, can I just have just five companies? Oh, five companies is okay. One company, uh, one nga or two, okay na eh. Uh, the more companies in your portfolio, the lower your risk are. And I would suggest you can go into different industries. So if you have uh, ACSM, you can try to go into uh, consumer or properties or uh, utilities like mga Meralco or mga telecoms. So you can, sa five companies mo, you can diversify na in terms of industries. Kasi hindi naman lahat lugi eh. So like, tel uh, utilities are still binabayaran pa rin naman. Oriente, too big. So they might be, they might show, ano, they might show kahit pa paano a profitable quarter. So pwede. You can buy the five companies okay na for beginning. Again, depende sa funds. So if you're saying uh, you have 50,000, you go 10,000, 10,000. Not bad na rin yun. But if you have, let's say, alam ko, si Dennis, baka may mga 1M. So mga maraming companies ka na mabibili sa 1M, Dennis. Questions? Pa? Oh, 1.5 daw ang budget. Yun, marami yan ang mabibili nun. Pero again, mabibitin ka from experience if you have, let's say, a 10K. Nga yung 10K. Yung in all seriousness, pag may 10K ka, medyo mabibitin ka if you just buy one company. Kasi, um, due to volatility, especially pag beginner ka, kasi parang pag beginner ka, kahit nasa video yung long term, hindi mo may iwasan minsan to look at it on a daily basis, on a regular, kasi excited ka pa eh. ba So, pero pag nag-down ka ng mga 6, 7, 8% na kagad, baka kabahan ka na ng content. Pero again, yun niya. So, bitin ka if you have uh, 10,000. Pero it's a good start. It's a good start. Uh, ano pa? Questions? Wala na yan. Last slides na to. Last slide na to. Siguro ang next step for everyone is look into uh, opening an account. Sabi nga ni sabi nga ni ni tawag dito ni 
Jerome 1000 lang pwede na mag-open account. If nag-open ka naman ng account, it doesn't mean na bibili ka kagad. You just open an account, uh, see what's inside, di ba? Parang free look. And then, medyo, um, pag naka-familiarize ka na sa movement ng mga stocks, then you can start buying. Advanced tip, pag medyo malaki na capital natin, 8,000 pesos, pinakasulit na transaction amount sa call financial in terms of commission expense. Yeah, total 8K. Oo nga pala, may mga commissions yan. Yung mga broker fees. Ano pa ba yung mga fees? Admin? Ano? Uh, Naka-breakdown naman yun eh. Yun, sales tax yun. Pero maliit siya compared to, if you will compare it to the mutual funds, mas maliit siya. Mas malaki yung charges sa mutual funds. Dahil meron kang fund manager. Ito, like I said kanina, you are your own fund manager. Do you check all companies and study to determine kung saan ka bibili? Uh, not all. Um, ako, like I said, I value invest. So, tumitingin na ako sa companies that uh, blue chips lang ako mostly. Uh, I rarely go into, look into, kanina tumingin ako sa mga frutas, kanyan. Uh, pero I rarely go into the mid cap. So, sa mga blue chips lang. And then, um, I pick certain stocks. Uh, naglalagay ako sa watch list ko. So, ginagawa ko, nilalagay ko sa watch list ko. And then, doon ako magbe-base ko. Ano yung charts yung titignan ko. 30 lang talaga company sa... No, sa PSEI, index lang yun. 30. 30 lang yung index. Uh, yung exchange mismo, it's around... It's 271 companies. Mukhang plano ni Dennis bilhin lahat ng companies eh. Nang hinayang siya, 30 lang ba? Uh, pero sa benta, di mo mo kundi. Oh. Questions? Questions pa? Wait, ano yung question? Last question nyo yan. Pero at this point, ah, uh, uh, yun niya. If you go blue chips, if you do value investing long term, so, uh, okay ka na yun. You, take into consideration din yung mga tips ni George dun sa chat group. Ah, hindi, hindi pala niya na-share dito. Ah, hindi ko alam ko sa chat group niya na-share yun eh. Like, um, be patient. Pag nag-open ang markets, try to be patient. Kasi not necessarily, it's a, marami rin are eager to buy during an opening. Minsan, a good gauge would be the closing as well. So, so you can, huwag ka masyadong atatre minsan. Nung nag-start ako, ganun din ako. Pero, later on, realize ko, there's always an opportunity nga. So, uh, minsan, naghihintay na lang ako towards the end or to the midday para makita ko ano yung movement. Ganun. So, may sabi nila na kapag nag-invest ka sa stock market, consider it wala. Hindi. Nagkasabi lang nun yung mga hindi marunong. Kasi, kasi hindi nila naiintindihan eh, di ba? So ngayon, kunyari ikaw, Jerome, naiintindihan mo na that there's value investing, there's uh, there's uh, day trading. Uh, then, ang objective mo talaga dito is not to lose money, but to earn money. You may lose some at the start, kasi nga, syempre, hindi ka pa marunong. Um, or hindi mo pa naiintindihan masyado, or bago pa lang sa'yo to. Uh, then, Siyempre, you lose a little bit. Pero, since naiintindihan mo, may background ka, alam mo yung strategy mo, ang goal mo here is to make money. And if you are losing, if sa start pa lang, consider it wala na, then mag-defeat yung purpose na gusto mong kumita. Okay, but, but you have to understand na naiintindihan ko to investment instrument na to and I want to learn more. The more you learn, the more experience you have, the better for you to be able to profit. Kung long term naman ang goal, ano yung ideal frequency ng checking ng performance? Um, uh, 
uh, monthly siguro for quarterly. Depende sa'yo eh, if you have time eh. Ito. Uh, maganda rin if you check from time to time, monthly basis, ganyan, weekly basis. Kasi you want to, uh, actually maganda weekly basis. If you have time on a daily basis, kahit sa closing lang, ganyan. The login ka lang naman, check mo yung price eh. Pwede kasi, okay na rin. Kasi you know the movement of the market. So if there are other opportunities, uh, you can take advantage of those as well. Yan, yung mga, oh yan, pinost na ni Argel. 8,000 pesos kasi ang commission ng CEO is 20 pesos or 0.25%. Service higher. Para masulit ang 20 pesos na commission. Divide 20. O yan. Yan ang tip ni Argel. Yan, 8K or up. Uh, hindi talaga ako into stocks. Um, uh, actually, like na-mention ko nga, hindi talaga ako into trading. I tried trading, pero wala akong tiyaga or hindi ako, um, hindi ako, wala akong tiyaga to do it on a daily basis or a weekly basis. But I understand the concept of trading. Um, hindi ko lang siya mapagtuunan ng pansin. So, but, the reason why I do value investing kasi uh, in 2008 was the first time I invested in the stock market. And that was before the crisis. So, yung pinasok ko doon na 20,000, nag-start ako sa stock market. Bumagsak siya to mga 10,000 na lang, 12, ganyan, 12,000. So, medyo kinabahan ako. So, Noong 2008, hindi na ako nagpasok ulit. Okay? And then, fast forward to mga 2010-2012. Uh, yung pinasok ko na 20,000, nagbaloon na siya to mga 33-40,000. And then, doon ko na-realize na an opportunity like a crisis, dapat i-take take advantage natin. So, I do value investing na kapag may mga major drops talaga. So, meron na yung mga kilala that mag-iipon talaga sila ng cash for a time like this. Kasi sabi nila, every 10 years there's a crisis. There's a financial crisis that's gonna happen. So, ito na siguro yung 10 years that we're waiting for. Pero, you know, ganun yung strategy ko. Mas gusto ko yung ganun strategy. So, I guess it's a matter of preference kung gusto mo sa stock or hindi. But I've been investing from time to time. Like, if meron akong extra funds. Uh, like bumibili ako ng konting shares of certain stocks. Uh, oh, pwede. A lot, 10 to 20%. Oh, pwede. But again, you have to have a strategy. Hindi lang yung porket like, alat ako ng 10, 20%, then invest ko lang sa stocks and then wala akong strategy. Dapat meron strategy. Actually, kahit naman ito, for practical purposes lang. Um, I know that, you know, we value insurance talaga as the high priority kasi kailangan appropriately insured ka. Pero, uh, practicality-wise, usually a person would split kung ano man yung income niya. Some would go into insurance, some would go into investments. Diba? Kasi, uh, especially if medyo may edad na like, um, sa late 30s na or mid 30s, gusto rin nila kumita ng pera. So, uh, practicality-wise, some would do really, um, ang reality, some would split their income into oh, ito, stock investing, ito, meron akong for premiums, yan. later on, if lumaki yung income ko, then I'll buy more, more, more stocks and more insurance. Ganun eh. From most of the people, na na namimit ko. Ganon sila. Hindi talaga lahat binubuhos nila sa insurance. Question ta. Rowell, nasagot ko ba yung tanong mo? Um, yung trading pala, the concept of trading in stocks is pretty much similar. I think, I would think the 
it's pretty much a similar concept when you do forex trading. Mas mabilis lang ang takuan sa forex. Uh, mas mabilis lang yung mas matlakas lang yung volatility. Sa so, mas mabilis ang galawan sa forex. Kasi it's a 24 hour swing sa forex. Hi sir. Hi Ruel. Sorry nagtatrabaho ako, <laughs> hirapin ako mag-type. Okay lang. Ay <laughs> tanong ka lang yung example sa experience mo, syempre. Ah, uh, kumbaga mas experience ka naman sa ano sa investment. Tanong ko lang kung nabubuy mo ba yung sarili mo na uh, sinaseparate mo talaga yung insurance versus the investment. So talagang ko ikaw kung ikaw yung mga plan mo, uh, hindi ano ka ba? Uh, fan ka ba ng view? Eh, ikaw yung tao na iba yung insurance mo sa investment mo. Total feeling mo naman kaya mo i-handle yung investment mo na parang ganoon. Uh, oh, actually, uh, ako, marami rin ako insurance. So I have term, I have UL. So, believer ako ng insurance. Ngayon, um, I, it serves different purpose for me. So, like, yung insurance ko talaga, binavalue ko siya uh, because ayokong magkasak, ayokong wala akong money pag nagkasakit ako. So, kaya ako bumibili kahit term lang. Um, kasi nga, hindi ko kaya to buy all UL. So, babay muna ako ng term. So, I have term na Kunyari, 5.5M. Meron akong term na Guardian 1. Eh, 5.5M, binabayaran ko lang mga 17,000 a year. So, ang liit lang nun for that much coverage. So, hindi ako nanghihinayang doon sa binabayad ko kasi feeling ko sobrang mura nun. Uh, so, ganun yung strategy ko. Now, on the investment sides, uh, I'm into the business rin kasi. So, I would know na yung sa business would give me more profit in terms of yung margins ko. Um, so, ang stock investing for me is parang aside uh, part lang ng additional income ko. Whatever is I get profit from the business, pinapasok namin minsan sa stocks for opportunities like these. So, um, hindi mahirap pag, paghaluin yung concept of insurance and investing. They're, they're really two different uh, products that serve different purpose. So, ang VUL ko naman, kaya ako bumibili ng VUL. Kasi nga, um, Value-wise, let's say, kunyari, ang Active Health Invest, di ba, covered ako, let's say, for 1M and uh, 1M Critical, 1M Life, and let's say, nagkasakit ako for Critical Illness. In the long run, assuming na kinulang yung 1M ko, at least meron akong account value na nakastore na doon. So, at least hindi ko kailangan hiwalay. Hindi magulo for me. I think it's a matter of kung ano yung organized for a person. Like for me, hindi magulo na meron pa akong separate na investment for my funding, ganyan. At least doon, nakatabi na sa VUL. Now, if kinulang yung 1M coverage ko for critical illness, meron akong account value that I can withdraw from time to time para magdagdag. Nasagot ba yung tanong? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks. Technically po, ba pang aggressive investors lang talaga ang uh, hindi. Technically, hindi. Um, ang kaya lang nasasabi na is for aggressive investors siya. Kasi they don't understand. Like sabi ko nga, aggressiveness is more of the risk. Eh, yung volatility. If you understand it, you lower the risk na. Okay, so, kailangan lang naintindihan mo. Um, sabi ko, ang example ko nga kanina, a business can be an aggressive investment opportunity pero every decision you make in a business is a calculated risk so it lowers your risk talaga so hindi that it doesn't mean that for aggressive investors lang siya ang important talaga sa stock investing is you have the strategy and alam mo yung strategy mo and you stick to that strategy so hindi hindi siya pang aggressive investors for me eh some advisors might probably would say otherwise. Hindi, kaya rin pala natin sinasabi na for aggressive siya. Kasi some of our clients, they don't really have a background uh, of investing. Kaya for them, it might be aggressive. So the more you learn, the less aggressive it will be for you. Uh, so yun lang yun. Kaya natin sinasabi na yung mga equity funds natin is for aggressive investors. Kasi yung mga kausap natin, hindi naman sila familiar. Hindi sila invested talaga. So if, but if you ask 
clients mo that are invested in the stock market, you ask the same questions. They will understand the risk of us investing in an equity. So, maintindihan nila na. Hindi to aggressive. Alam po yung risk na to. Question? Okay. 4.30 na. Uy, si JJ. Hindi ko pa na rin magtanong. Siya yung nagsabing ano, tapos wala pa lang tanong. Oo nga. Pero yung tanong mo, kahit kinig ka nga. <laughs> Kala ko pa naman marami kang tanong. 